Welcome to the Stutzman channel. Today we're back with the 94 Ford Ranger and this time we have a brake light indicator light bulb that's not working. Now this video is more or less a video to show guys who are weak in electrical just going to go over some wiring diagrams and thought processes and analyzing the circuits and kind of giving my thoughts and trying to see how we could uh, diagnose this because it may be probably a bad bulb but before we go in ripping out an instrument cluster it'd probably be a good idea to know that the bulb is pretty well we feel pretty good that it's probably going to be blown before we go in there so let's go over the diagrams and take a look at that and see what we got okay here's our wiring diagram for our brake indicator light which is right here now up on the top side there is a B plus line going out, going to the previous page, that is going through a fuse, F7, 15 amp. Now, one of the things that could possibly be wrong here is that maybe we have a bad fuse, all right? And of course, now before we get to, to the fuse, keep in mind that this side here has got to be the ground side for this here bulb. So what can we do without pulling out meters and going to find out where is the fuse panel located to check a fuse? Okay, if we look right here, we can see this malfunction indicator lamp is right here, check engine light. So this should be on whenever the ignition switch is in the run position. So let's do that. We'll just take the switch, we'll turn it on, and we'll see if this here bulb lights. Now if this bulb lights we automatically know that fuse is good because it's feeding this bulb also and it's highly unlikely that the trace that's inside the instrument cluster has opened up in here. So we're going to disregard that. So we're going to see if this bulb lights up. So let's do that right now. And if I take a turn on the switch as you can see, there's our check engine light comes on. So now we know that fuse is good. So we don't have to waste time in that step. Just by turning on a switch, we've already taken care of the fuse for it. Now we're left, is it a bulb or is there a problem on the ground side? Let's do the easy part first. Let's follow down this wire. And now you notice we can go off this direction here. Then we're coming up, coming over, and in my case, I, I'm without daytime running lamps, so I'm coming down here, going through here, going through here, and now I have the park brake switch. Now when the parking brake is applied, this switch will close, applying a ground on this wire all the way back straight to the bulb. Let us see if that works. Lower left corner, that's where the brake indicator light should be. Let's turn on the switch. It's in the run position, pressing the parking brake, and absolutely nothing. Let's say that, uh, first of all, that maybe we can, uh, we can jump this switch. We can put a ground here. We can ground this switch, and then we can see if this light bulb will come on because what we're doing here if you notice we are ahead of the diode so it's going straight up to the bulb so we're directly putting a ground so we're just bypassing all of this stuff right in here let's try that first we'll put a ground on there and see what we got all right i got ready to get in here to jump out the switch and this is what i found so it's sitting there hanging down so it is broken away, this here phenolic, nylon, whatever. All right, so we're still going to do our test here. So let me go ahead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. We're going to pull this off. I'm going to take this and put a, put a jumper lead in here. And I am going to connect it to right here, to this here metal bracket. That'll be our ground. And then we're going to do our test to see if we can get this light bulb to come on. All right, here's a switch, broken switch, and I just disconnected it. And what we have now is I've took, taken and uh, you can look up in there. You can see that I have the connector 
hopefully you, yeah, there's a connector for it and I've just plugged up in a test lead here. And the other end is connected up here to this here bracket for the parking brake mechanism so I can get me a ground. So let's take a look and see if that does anything. See if this here light bulb will come on. Okay, let's turn it on, let's see what it does. And as you can see, it does come on. Let's say that you park brake switch wasn't the problem. And let's say that we would like to check this diode assembly here. Well, what we could do is we can disconnect this here brake fluid level connector. And as you can see, this is going through a ground through that switch. So we can find this here dark green with a yellow wire inside the connector and then we will take it to ground and let's see if the indicator light comes on. If it does, then we know that the diode is okay. So let's try that now. Now here is our connector that went to the brake master cylinder and there's the other part of the connector there. And if you look on here, you can see that the wire color, there's that dark green with a yellow all the way up at the very top. And I have a connector stabbed in there. And I have it connected to the ground connection on the battery. Now let's go in there and let's see if the light co comes on. Okay, lower left corner, turning the switch on. And as you can see, it came on. That's proving that our diode is working correctly. Some of you may be wondering where that diode resistor assembly is at. So here's the battery. It's on the driver's side. We just follow back. And if you look right there, you can see there's a tag. And on this tag, you can see that it'll say pretty much resistor diode assembly. So what you have to do is you have to take this here, tape, unravel it, it's inside, in with the bundle. It's probably soldered in there. It doesn't show a connector on the wiring diagram. So just in case somebody wanted to know where it was located. And since we just checked this here diode out, we can go ahead and, go and check this here brake fluid level switch out right here by jumpering, jumpering it out. Now this is not actually checking the switch, but basically we're going to be checking the integrity of this ground to see if when this switch, when it closes, when the brake fluid gets low, that it will also bring on this here light by bringing the ground through the switch, through the diode, up to the light. And what we're going to do is we're going to take with this here connector still disconnected, we're going to put a jumper from the dark green wire with the yellow tracer and we're going to jumper it over to the black wire which goes directly to ground. So in effect we're pretty much bypassing this switch. So here's that same connector. As you can see all the way to your left is the dark green wire with the yellow tracer. All the way to the right is a black wire which is going directly to ground. So I have those two terminals coming out and they're just tied together. It's just a jumper wire. That's all it is. Now let's go inside and let's turn on the switch and see if the light comes on. Okay, so now we're going to turn on the switch. And as you can see, in the lower left corner, the brake light came on. Now keep in mind, that this doesn't say that the switch is good. It's just checking the circuit integrity to make sure that everything else in that circuit works correctly. Now that only leaves one thing left, and that's this ignition switch. Now if you look at the ignition switch, you can see that it's gonna be, when the start position, that it's gonna be putting a ground on this here wire it's going to be going up and it's going to be going up through the diode placing the ground on this side of the light exactly just like this switch 
that we just checked for the brake fluid level switch. Now, the purpose of this right here is a feedback to the vehicle owner so that when he starts the vehicle in the start position, that will put a ground momentarily on this here bulb so he can see it at that point. It's not going to be very on very long, but it should be on long enough for when it's in the start position. So to make this video complete, we will do that and see if that works. Again, lower left corner. And I did not see it come on. Now as you saw, when we cranked the engine over to the start position, we did not see the indicator light come on. But we've eliminated a lot of stuff. We know the diode is good. We know this is good, this wire, because the bulb lit when we did a jump over here on the brake fluid level switch. So that will put our problem anywhere from here all the way back. Possibly the ignition switch, that, pos that position in there. So, but for the sake of the video, to keep it short, I'm not going to worry about this part here. As far as me, I really don't care about it because I can set the brake and I can see the light. This is only for just a feedback for the, for the person cranking the engine. They will see the light come on momentarily and it's just a bulb check for the person. When you're looking at diagrams, sometimes they can get really confusing because lines is here and you got multiple circuits and you got one circuit feeding off on another page. One thing I like to do is draw the circuit up, redraw it, only pertinent to what you need to know of what you're working on. Now, for example, of what we were just going over, here's a circuit, same circuit, and I just redrawed it. So you can see that it makes things a lot clearer so you can see things uh, easier and not trying to run all over the place trying to find something. Now one thing too that we can follow up on is a diode. Now a diode, this in this case right here, going back to this one right here, this diode is used as a blocking diode. Now if you can see there's a line that goes up and it goes up to a B plus voltage. And of course this here is feeding a turn signal. Now if you also, again, if you wanted to be sure that this here circuit is working and you're not having to go out and check the fuses, check your turn signals. Do they work? Okay, now you know your fuse is good. All right, so this B plus is coming down and it's coming through this here, this here resistor. And then it's also, it's got this here diode. All right, now the purpose of this resistor is that since we have this B plus voltage fed here, well, if this switch was to close or this switch was to close, well, we would have a ground, right? The ground would come up. Well, look at here. If we didn't have this here resistor in here and this here was connected to the B plus, the ground to the B plus, now we got a direct short. So this is serving as a load resistor so that when one of these here switches, either one closes, then this here is going to serve a load to isolate the B plus from the ground. Okay, and also that B plus voltage when it comes through, it's not going to go back up through the diode this direction because of the orientation that it's in. In this case, it's a blocking diode. Now, going back to our little diagram about the diode, just a little tidbit here. It's not overly complicated. Maybe I can do a video and we just strictly talk about diodes. Diodes. If you notice it has an arrow, all right? The arrow always is going to be pointing in the direction of conventional current flow. In other words, in this direction. Positive, it's going positive towards the negative potential over here on this side. All right, this side over here is called an anode. This side over here is called a cathode. For a diode to work, the anode has to be more positive in respect to the cathode. And that means that once that happens, then current will flow. This here diode will turn on. Think of it as a switch. Nothing no more than a switch. It will turn on. 
Then, as the current comes through the diode, it will drop a voltage across itself, approximately 0.7 volts. So this side is, say, 12 volts. Then this side over here will be 11.3 volts. 0.7 volts is dropped across it. Now this side over here, like I said, this is the anode, this is a cathode. And you can think of that as no more than a switch. Once you have the polarity right on your, on your two terminals here, then the diode will turn on. If you reverse the voltages, then it's going to turn off. So that's it in a nutshell. So the diode is pretty simple. Nothing, nothing really to it. As I mentioned in the very beginning of this video, it was more for beginners who want to learn a little bit more about electrical, following, following the diagrams, kind of analyzing them. Things you can do without just grabbing a meter right off the bat. Some things that you can look at these diagrams and save you some time. Now, like I said, it's not for the super techs out there because this was pretty much a pretty simple circuit. And also, it was to encourage some of the guys that's getting into working on their own cars and, uh, you know, lots of electrical on a car. So that's basically this video is for you guys. One of the things you got to you got to put in your head if you're going to be working on cars is that you you got to learn you got to learn how these things work and that's why I went over this diagram to cover some of that stuff how does it work remember engineers technicians they want to know how does a circuit work scientists they want to know why does it work so we're in the other category how does it work once you know how the circuit works, well, you can come up with your own diagnostic methods of how to test something. And if you don't test something, and you don't care how it works, and you want to give some symptoms of a problem on a car, and you want somebody to tell you what it could be, which it could be quite a few things, as you might have seen in this video, well, and if you don't mind spending money, and you got the money, then you could just change out parts. So it's trying to get you focused on what is the problem, change just that, and then fix the problem with the minimum amount of money being sp uh, spent. And besides, invest in yourself. You're, you're important. So take the time to learn it. It's not that hard. You start getting into it. You start reading. You start studying. And start working on your cars. And before you know it, you'll be fixing things, you know, just like the pros. Anyway, let's wrap the video up. I appreciate you watching. You guys take care, and we'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.